In this episode, we're going to talk about my audio workflow for YouTube videos and how I record and how I do the post-processing or editing. Now, first thing I do is I have actually treated this space acoustically with sound blankets. So I have a sound blanket hanging here, one over here, one back by the camera. I've got a blanket on the floor behind me. I think a lot of people don't realize that the space in which you record has a huge bearing on how the overall audio sounds. So if you're in a space that has a lot of reverberation, that is sound bouncing off the walls and coming back to your microphone, you're gonna be able to pick that up. It doesn't matter which microphone you use, it's going to pick that up to some extent. And so it's important to, first of all, consider that. Choose a space. And even if you can't put sound blankets up permanently, maybe just temporarily when you're shooting. So I use these producer's choice blankets. Nice thing about these is they're black on one side, white on the other. So you can also use them to reflect or absorb light. So it can also help with your lighting design. They are heavy, but they do a very good job of managing the reverberation or that echo sound within a room. And that is probably the most important thing you can take away from this video here. Uh, maybe the second most important. Next up, microphone. So I usually boom a microphone. I have a microphone boom just out of the frame right here. Tonight I'm using the Audio-Technica AT875R, which is sort of a, I would say sort of a more budget-oriented shotgun microphone. And I have that mounted on a C-stand with a boom pole. You can also do this in a much more budget-friendly way as well. So what I would recommend is using a microphone such as maybe a Deity D3 Pro or a Rode video mic. One of the video mics doesn't even matter which one really. Um, but I have a video up here about how to mount that on a small microphone stand above you. And the secret really with the microphone is placement, getting it close to you. So here, for example, I have this one within about, I would say 40 centimeters, probably maybe a little closer than that, 35. The secret is to get it close. It will sound so much better than if you put it on top of your camera and have it two meters away. So get it close, makes a huge difference. Now I record my audio into an audio recorder. Today, for example, we are using a Sound Devices Mix Pre 3. So obviously, again, you don't have to use something that's this pricey for what you're doing. If you don't choose to spend your money that way, that's fine. I typically use something like this or maybe a Zoom F4, F6, F8. I also have a professional level mixer, the Sound Devices 888. I use a variety of those, depending on what I'm doing for the particular video. But I also used to use a Tascam DR60D, which was about a, I think at the time I bought it, it was about $180 US. So there are a whole variety of different options there. Now, I don't feed the audio from that recorder into the camera. Instead, I record audio on the camera as well. And then you'll see in our post process, we actually marry the two together. In this particular workflow for YouTube videos, it's usually just me talking and I record the entire thing in one take. And if I say something wrong, I just stop and start again. You can actually look at our overall YouTube video workflow video up here where we kind of cover that whole process. Now, once we get into post, I have kind of a unique workflow here. I think it's unique, but it is the type of thing that works with a YouTube video. It may not work with other types of things. So for example, with a narrative film, I think the workflow is gonna be completely different. But because in this case with a YouTube video, what I'm doing is I just have kind of what I call the main storyline. It's this clip here where I'm talking to camera. I do that all in one take. And because I do it all in one take, that means that I can basically process the audio before I start the video edit. Otherwise, if you were doing a narrative film, you would probably want to do the edit first and then do the audio mix after that. The reason for that, of course, is that with narrative films, you do a whole bunch of takes of the exact same thing. And you, you probably don't want to process all 200 clips of audio when you're only gonna end up using maybe 60 of them. So that's an example of why with the YouTube workflow, it's okay to do this first. Now, because I can do the audio first, I usually just use Isotope RX to do the audio processing. Because I have an acoustically treated room, I don't usually have to do any sort of noise reduction. And so that makes my process a lot easier. Typically what I'll do is I'll do my equalization first. And if you wanna see how I go about doing that, we have a video up here where we cover the equalization process that I use, and you can go and dig into that in more detail if you choose. As I mentioned before, I don't typically for YouTube videos have to do any sort of denoising, but if you did, I would use Isotope RX. Again, there is a dialogue denoise. There's also a dialogue isolate, and the dialogue isolate is super easy to use, super effective, 
as long as you don't push it too hard, it generally sounds really, really transparent. That is to say, you can't tell you did noise reduction. So that's a really good one to use. Fortunately, I don't generally have to use it. If I were in a space where I did pick up some reverb, Isotope RX also has a de-reverb. Now, a lot of this you can do in other apps as well. You can actually even do a lot of this in your own video editing app. You don't even have to go into an audio editing app or a digital audio workstation. So if you wanted to do that, you certainly could. Next up, I do what I call breath control. <laughs> what we're trying to do here is with our audio in the end, our goal is to bring the level up to a consistent loudness level. And when you pull the levels up, you also pull the breaths up. And so the breaths become fairly prominent. And so one of the things I like to do is use this deep breath plugin. What that does is it basically detects all of the breaths and just reduces their level by 9 dB in this case. The important thing here is that with this plugin, you really have to kind of find the sweet spot for the sensitivity. That's how sensitive is it is to picking up the breaths. And what I do is I click this checkbox where it says breaths only, output breaths only. And that way I can hear what it's detecting. And that way I can move this sensitivity slider until I find a place where it's getting most of the breaths, but also not cutting into the dialogue. So that's a really important part. Then once I've found that spot, I uncheck it and then I click apply. Now, once we've done that, the final step is to loudness normalize. Again, this is to make it nice and loud and present. And that usually involves a couple of steps. Number one, I generally have to do a little bit of compression. And then once I've done enough compression to make enough headroom, and basically pulling all those peaks down a little bit, I can push the overall audio levels up without clipping those peaks at the top. So if you wanna see how we go about that, we have another video over here that runs through that process. Now, once I've done that, it's time to go back over, in my case, into Final Cut Pro, where I do my video edit. I save off the edited audio, and then I can bring that into Final Cut Pro 10, choose the video clip, right click, sync them up, and we're ready to start the edit. One other thing I do in Final Cut Pro, just in terms of audio, is that when I do make a cut, I'll usually bury that underneath B-roll, but one of the things I do is I have this sound only transition plugin. This is a free plugin made by Alex Golner. I'll put a link for it down below in the description. And what that does is it just does a crossfade between the two tracks that you've cut. So it makes it a little bit smoother as well. And that's my audio workflow. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound or video. Talk to you soon. Bye.